this is part two of a series of videos on how to build a web chatbot. So in part one, we developed the basic user interface, how the uh, chatbot is going to communicate with the client. Right, so what we did was we created a web page and we created this button on the lower right. And when you click on this button, it's going to pop up a uh, window, right? And this window is where the interaction with the user will happen. In this video, we're going to actually enhance this window to be able to interact with the user by having a conversation with that user. I'm going to start off by replacing this hello I am a chatbot text with something more meaningful. So let's go ahead and make this a template because right now it actually returns a string so we want to return a template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a copy of this index and then I will call this maybe chat window. Okay and then in this HTML, it already imported the Bootstrap template, so it has all the jQuery and it also has, has a Bootstrap uh, framework. So that's enough for us to continue. And we don't need this script handler. And what we want to do is let's just replace replace this with a um, a div, and then let's say hi. Okay, so what I want to say as a first line is just say, Hi, I'm a chatbot. How can I be of assistance? And then once we have this uh, template HTML, we want to be able to return that here. So let's say we want to replace this line with a, well, we have to create a, a model, which is really just a hash map of string to object values. And then from there, we want to return a user time leaf engine to render this template. We want to pass that a model and view object, which consists of the model and the name of the template. So in this case, we want to say it's chat window without the HTML extension. Okay, so let's reload it. So here you go. Okay, and then let's put some spacing in between the borders so then it looks not as crowded. Okay, the way that I would do that is by putting this in a div and then I can put some so this m4 is a bootstrap class for defining the margin for this uh, div and you have m1 to m4 and m4 being the largest space and m1 being the smallest okay so we can see that there's some uh, white space around the borders so it doesn't feel as crowded okay and then now let's say we want to uh, ask what the user will, will be interested in Let's replace this with the uh, what? Okay, and then this is another line. So it's gonna ask, what would you like to do? And let's offer them some choices. So in, th in this example, I'm going to offer two choices. One is to tell me a joke, and the other one is search Google. All right, so let's see how that looks. And it would be nice if we can actually just decorate the choices so that it becomes more of an option. So we can see that it actually becomes an option. So let's do... Okay, so you can see that it actually puts a decoration around this choice. But let us create our own uh, class to define this link, right? So we're going to create a class called choice. The way that we do that is basically to create a style in line and then let's create this class called choice. And then for this we want to create a um, we want to make it have a border, right? Maybe a light border and then have some spacing in between. So let's say we want to have a margin of four on all sides and then we want to display it as an inline block so then the choices will flow around each other. So let's see. Okay, and then okay, so margin basically defines the spacing between the choices, but we also want to have some uh, white space between the border and the actual text. So that is defined by the padding. So let's say I want to have a uh, two and then say six.
Okay, so that's looking better. And then let's make the border round. We do that by specifying a border radius. Okay, so that looks good. So let's do that for uh, the other choice as well. So let's say we use this class for the choice. Okay, so that looks a lot like a choice. So now if a user clicks on it, we basically will then take the next action. Let's also indicate that this is actually a choice by changing the cursor to be a pointer. Okay, so you can see that when I hover over the choices, it is actually going to be a cursor. And then let's also add a background. So then, you know, it kind of separates the choices from the conversation text. So let's add a background color. Okay, you can actually now tell that the choices apart from the actual conversation. Now that we are showing the choices, let's handle the replies when the user clicks on a choice. So the way that I'm going to do that is by tagging the choices with some ID. So I'm going to do that by using this data class, data choice. Right? So I'm going to say this is a joke. And then this one, I'm going to say this is a search. Okay, and then now that I have that, I'm also going to create a handler for this. So the way I do that is basically creating a script and then I'm going to create a function called uh, submit choice. And then this is going to take a element. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now is uh, on this element, I'm going to add a handler for when it's when they click it is going to then just call this JavaScript function submit choice. Okay, and then right now I'm, just, I'm going to alert the choice that is here. So I'm going to alert this data choice. So the value of that data choice, and I'm going to do okay. So what's happening is that when a user clicks on this a tag, right, it's going to call this function submit choice passing in this element, which is the A tag right now. And then here in this element, we're using this data set class and that data is actually defined here. So when we say data dash choice, it actually adds to a class called data set and then the choice is basically whatever is after this dash. So that, and then we access the value of that data. So let's recompile and then reload it and see what happens. Okay, so if we click on this, it's gonna say joke. And if we click on this, it's going to say search. Okay, so that's the behavior that we are expecting. Okay, so instead of popping it up, I'm going to now submit this choice to the server by using a Ajax post. So if I submit it to this um, chat route with the choice, so I'm going to pass the choice value as a parameter called choice, and then I will expect a result. Then let's append this result to the conversation. The way that we do that is by um, let's wrap this whole section in a conversation. So let's say conversation in a div call that has an idea of conversation. Then we're going to wrap all this in here because what we want to do is when there's a response, we want to append this div. So this will append to the existing conversation. Uh, we can then say this conversation. Right, so we will then say result append to and then this element. Okay, and then here we're gonna implement this route with the post method. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say spark.post and then the route. Now what we're gonna do is just say that was funny. Okay, and let's restart this and then uh, see if that works the way that we expect it. So then if I click on this, right, uh, right now nothing happens. So let's debug this by going through the uh, JavaScript console. Right, so if you press F12, you're gonna bring up this console, or we'll go to this console and then we can see that this uh, post is not a function. So let's go debug that. So the reason why the post function doesn't exist in this case is that in the imports we are actually importing this uh, jQuery slim 
which doesn't have any of the additional functions that we're looking for, right? So what we have to do is we're going to have to replace that with just the min version without the slim, right? So the min, the regular jQuery version. So we're going to remove the slim from the import and then let's do that again. Okay, so we re reload it, right? So then now what happens is I believe it did make the call, but then now it's just saying that that was funny is not a uh, recognized expression. So I, I believe what's happening is that this right here is expecting the results to be a HTML tag. So what we have to do is then we have to now um, change this to return a div. So then you can actually append this in the div with the ID conversation. So let's reload this. And then now you can see that it actually did append this that was funny to this conversation. And if I click on uh, Google search, it does the same thing. So now that we have both choices communicating with the server, it's time to differentiate the results based on the choice from the user. So the way that I get the choice is by getting it from the request. And so then now if I, if I compare the choice, Okay, then I'm going to return this, and then if it's search, right, I'm going to return, okay, I'm going to return uh, something else. Let's return, okay, so in this case, if, and then, otherwise, let's return, uh, I don't, Okay, so what we're going to do is if the choice that's passed into this post method is joke, then we're going to return that was funny. If it's search, we're going to say you found me. Otherwise, we're going to say I don't understand, which should not happen. Okay, so let's restart this. Then, all right, so this says that was funny. And if I do uh, search Google, it says you found me. Okay, so that is how we're going to handle the user interaction with the chatbot. Uh, in this video. So in the next video, we're going to go through more richer interactions. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them below. And if you want to see the next part, make sure that you subscribe to this channel to get notified of when the next part will come out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.